this. You can't put it goofy? No. Oh. Oh. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Damn it! I was trying to steal! I was trying to steal! I was trying to steal! I was What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us another episode of Dope As Usual Podcast. I am your host, Dope As Yola. Today, guys, we have another episode. Thank you for joining us. Awesome guest. I am excited. Super stoked to hear what you got to say. Thank you, everybody. Uh, introducing Jerron Wilson, pro skater, entrepreneur. Thank you for coming. Hell yeah. Thank you for having Thank me, you. man. Thank you for coming today. For sure. I like the way you rolled up. I thought you rolled up on a board. This fool did too, but <laughs> I thought I I was like, yo, does everybody fucking skate? Oh, you didn't see? Yeah, I had I, yeah, a, like a, just a blank board I thought board you were rolling you. up on a fucking skate. We're like, yo, no one drives? What the yeah. fuck? Nah, we're right here in the middle of, yeah, in yeah. the cuts here. So, yeah. Got you. Um, thank you for coming out. Of course. Appreciate thank you, you so much. Me, for sure. Um, let's get right into it, man. Yeah. For everyone out there, pro skater. Yeah, still holding it on, holding still on ca- tight. I, oh, man, I've uh, done my research, a lot of clips. I just, do you ever look at yourself and go, fuck, that was me? You ever done that? Because I, I mean, looked at you like, yo, I met this man. He's flying. You're right. Uh, you know sick. what? It is kind of a little, you know, I would have never thought, you know, years ago that I would be, you know, here still, you know, being a professional skateboarder fucking 30 years later. Um, no, I definitely didn't, you know, envision myself, you know, doing that. But yeah, I mean, we're here and, you know, we're enjoying it. So when did you uh, first start skating? I mean, we all first first started skating, and then years later, like, no, I'm I'm serious. I'm trying to skate. When did you right. first pick? Did you pick it up, and you were serious right away? No, I mean, I think it was one of those things. It was just fun. Like, it was like a you know, a lot of kids in my neighborhood were skating, and and my cousins. So it made it easy for me to kind of just kind of be allured to it. So, I, uh, yeah, they pieced make the a board together for me when I was like ten, and ever since that, I was just like in love with it. See, that's, that was my question. So you're about 10 years old, so yeah. you picked it up and just kept running, never stopped? Yeah, I and mean, when I stopped probably for like a year or so, and I rode bikes, you know, what any the typical kid shit. You know, would do, you know, at that time. So um, but that's probably around 11. I stopped for like a year and then started back up around around 12 or so. Yeah, yeah I saw, um, I Googled some videos. I saw a video, you you look like you were 12, 13 years old, man. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's, what I saw was, all my friends when I was younger, like, yo, you could be really good. Just stick with that shit. Nobody ever did. Totally. But you obviously did. When did you start picking up and realizing, like, yo, I'm so much fucking better than everybody my age? Um, Shit, dude. I think it was just one of those things. I just started picking up tricks, like, fairly easy. And, you know, like, I think it was just it was so fun. So it was like yeah. one of those things that was so new, so fun. And a lot of kids around me, I had my close friend, Western Korea, that kind of definitely motivated me just to seeing him. He was my age if not like a year younger. And um, yeah, it was really easy to, you know, go out with him and just, you know, find these little spots around the neighborhood and just, you know, have fun. The next thing you know, we started entering contests. And then that's when I kind of, you know, seen that, hey, people are paying attention. They're asking me like, hey, you want, you know, some wheels? You want the little wheel sponsor or nothing? Oh. So it was like, you know, gradually kind of just, just happening, you know, without really trying, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you just... I'm good, but you didn't realize how good you were until people were like, yo, could you ride with this? You want to ride with our stuff? Exactly. You want some wheels? Yeah. How old age created, was that? Um, I started probably like the first time. I arrived around 14, I guess. Fuck. Yeah. You're just entering high school. It's about to get sponsorships and shit. Yeah, but I was like going into high school, dude. I didn't even really like, I didn't tell people I was a skater. I was like kind of like on low key about it, you know? Where are you from? Uh, San Fernando Valley. Born and raised. Right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. And this is in the early 90s. You're skating, not telling anybody. But then again, early 90s when I was a kid, my mom gave me a stack of thrashers. And mm-hmm. that's how I learned about all the skating. I mean, I love skating as a kid. I just hate hitting my head. I'm fucking right. over hitting my head. And <laughs> I'm done with my tailbones being bruised and shit. I'm fucking over. I started selling drugs. That's the route I went. Right, right. You know what I mean? That's the route I went. But yeah. um, as a kid, 14 years old in high school, you didn't... You weren't hyped on that shit? No, I was super hyped, but I was, at the same time, it was like I had two different worlds. I had I was going to school and doing my thing, like, you know, had my school for school homies and shit. And then, you know, after I would leave, like on Friday, I would just go kick it with my skate homies, you know, and I would just be at, at two different worlds, you know, and I'd never really mixed both of them for some reason, you know. It was just, I was like, That's the first high, time school is school and skating is skating. And I just, you know, kind of rode with it like that, yeah. 
Really? Did you skate with the kids around you or were, were you having to go, like you said, on the weekends, you go to the skate friends? No, were, I had like people that basically, uh, going back again to the, the contest atmosphere, you know, I ended up meeting people in, in that arena, which I ended up hanging out with them in, on the weekends. You know, they would come and pick me up. Say for, I hate the nickname drop, but like Eric Costin and Tim Gavin, they would come and pick me up on the weekends and I would spend the weekend with them and we would skate and, you know, do that thing. And then um, they would bring me home on Sunday and my mom, you know, would be happy that I came home because I would just, sometimes I just didn't want to go back to school, you know. But by the time I was like ninth, 10th grade, I was asking her like, is it cool if I, you know, Stay do, do homeschool or some shit? And she's like, oh, you got fucking two years left. Just finish this shit. You know what I mean? So, she was on you about it. Yeah. Did you finish? I did. Oh, then, I mean, that's all that matters, man. Totally, totally. But I'll say, it's so, okay. That was the same situation with me, except, like I said, I went another route. Right. Friday night, like, cool, I got this much. I'm going to sell this. I'll come back Sunday. I'll see you later. Right. And they know I knew what I was doing. At least you were doing it right. I didn't separate shit. Right. That's why my right. shit got it messed up. I didn't. I almost didn't finish school. But So you're growing up in the 90s going, I just, I know you're like, don't want to name drop, but you have to remember looking outside yourself, uh, fans looking like yo totally. you know who you are right that's yeah. it's like it's on that status of i'm chilling with eric costin on the weekends we're chilling we grew up we came up together so you, how was it growing up knowing like all of you were about to be the shit for, for me it's kind of crazy because i was seeing them before i got to even you know get to that little realm of hanging with them you know so um it was bizarre for me you know i was just like because like i said everything happened really fast and to see my peers that were in videos and now I'm fucking chilling with them. I mean, yeah, it was kind of bizarre. But then once everything started happening, I'm like, yeah, here I am. Like, you know, that's what we do. I arrived, you know, which was rad, you know, but these guys were just, you know, obviously pioneered it right before I was able to, you know, actually be a part of it, you know? So it was cool, man. That's cool, man. Yeah. I, I always wanted to, I always want to ask that question. Like recent guests, how did you feel when you first, re it's just for me, skating's a thing I really, really loved as a kid. I just, mm -hmm. Until I was like 14 or 15, I realized, yo, you are not fucking down to hit these stairs. You're not down to go off low. I'm like, I'm not. Right. Not fucking down. All my friends are badasses. Right. All, we had one one sponsored skater in Merced where I'm from, and he was the man. He could do 360 flips and hard flips. Right. That was the shit. You know, the small hometown town. hero. Yeah, 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 the hometown. Like, yeah. no, he could hit the whole rail, motherfucker. <laughs> That's what it was. But you're, you're down here. You're around a bunch of legends, man. I think it's when you're in it, it's like kind of hard to be like, you know, fuck this is so rad but don't get me wrong i was super like humbled and blessed to be in this situation yeah. but i think when it's happening it's just like you know I you're, guess in the you're not you're in the moment yeah exactly yeah. that's it but so you're in the 90s <laughs> so i know i keep going back to it but that's that just reminds me of childhood man totally it just reminds me of being just grab a board you'll be back in five or six hours for sure you know come back and your elbows are fucked everything hurts. no phone so you know like yeah, you're trying no to get a home with you you're like you're gone all day yeah, the sun's like, going down fuck she's gonna beat my ass yeah no doubt. that was the that's how i always imagined being a kid but you guys are the ones i was looking at like wow these fucking kids are really doing he's not even older than me not even much older. you know that's how i was thinking because as right. a kid I'm looking at thrashers. It's nothing but white dudes. I didn't see nothing but white dudes, no man. Doubt. So when I was a kid, I was, I'm was i from a Mexican-ass town. It ain't happening. Totally. You're short as shit, bro. You're not a fucking tall white kid. It ain't going to fucking happen. Totally. So I when, think that was another reason why I kept it on the low in high school as well. I didn't want people all in my business. You know what I'm saying? Like, I dressed a certain way, and, like, it didn't look like I was a skater. You know, I, you know, I was wearing Nikes and shit and just – so I think that's kind of, like – maybe wouldn't give people an inkling that I was a skateboarder. You know what I'm saying? So Was it more of like, I'm proud, yet I don't want you to talk shit about me? Um, how, how would you feel about that? Why, why, why would you hold it? Cause it's, yeah, it's because awesome. I mean, there was a stigma about skaters to a certain degree. You know when what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, I, I didn't want to hear anything from anybody. You know what I'm saying? And mind you, I'm actually doing my fucking thing, to be honest. And like, I'm, I got sponsors and shit, and don't get me wrong. Like, I should be proud of that, which I, which I was. But mm -hmm. I ain't trying to go around the high school holding the flag like, motherfucker, I'm a pro skater. Like, no, or not no. a pro skater, but sponsored and shit. So I just kept it on the low. And people that knew, knew. You know what I'm saying? It was just... I think in hindsight, like, yeah, I should have been more, you know, vocal about it and been like, hey, I'm a skater and this and that. But And not even more of like, hey, what's up, man? I'm a pro skater. Right. Nothing like that. But right. what do you do? Oh, I skate and shit. Totally. Yeah. And I said, like, my close friends, they, they knew. Was, they knew. They knew what's up. Yeah, because then, like, they'd be like, what are you doing this weekend? I'm like, I'm, I'm be gone. Like, I'm 
going skating. This yeah. Day, you know what I'm saying? But what a transition from the 90s to now. You you go in, you're a pro skater. Every fucking person in the school knows you're a pro skater. Right. Because that shit's bad. And once it got it's accepted. Crazy. Yeah. I should see. And at that athlete. time, yeah, it definitely wasn't like how it is now. Get it's, chased off and shit with a skate. Yeah, you get chased insane, off man. anywhere. Every, yeah. every, there's so many skaters now. It's insane. I, I honestly, when I Googled that shit, I was like, you know what? Who's, who's the popular skaters right now besides Nigel Houston? Like mm-hmm. the ones coming up, there's hundreds. Oh, there's so many. Yeah, it's crazy. Hundreds. But social media has changed everything. For every, for every aspect. For every, for every skateboarder. But and I, I, I tell that and I, I'm very advocate on like, hey, dude, if you're not on social media and you're trying to really do something with skating, you, you're tripping. You better be on social media because if you're not, you're not, you're, you, you, you're, that's the way to get recognized. Yeah. You know? Used to make skate videos. Yeah. Now it's make them and put them on the fucking internet, man. What are you doing? Yeah. Not just pass them out tapes to your friend. Like, check this shit out. Pretty much. That was fun, man. I do remember the fisheye, all the kids at the park. Oh, man, I missed that Yeah, shit. it was good times, man. Yeah, Definitely. Fun, Definitely. Man. Um, So, like I said earlier, I met you through Omar Ratchet, man. Yeah. When we met, I think we were... We went to a dispensary, right? Yes, we did. We went to a dispensary. Yeah. yeah. I think it's Studio City. I forget the name of the, the, the spot. I remember where it's at. I don't remember the name of the spot. Yeah. But it was in Studio City. Yeah. So that's what I was going to bring up, and that's why I asked. You still smoke? Because I don't want to I do. box I people and I shit. I feel bad, you know? I, I want to ask so. first. For sure. Um, I'm so used to I'm like a, a bong smoker. That's are you what, really? That's how, I, that's how I smoke. But I'll smoke, you know, I'll, 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 so we got I'll do this. I'll do this, too. I Honestly, I don't bust the bongs out mm-hmm. because most people aren't bong smokers. I man. love it. I, 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 yeah. I, I got you before you leave. A hundred percent. There's bongs galore over here. I know. I just seen a big shipment going <laughs> yeah, out. I'm thank, like, yeah, damn, thank bro. You, thank you. Um, so with Diamond, let's get into that. For everyone out there, you were part of Diamond or re- formally? Or still, well, I'm co-owner, co-owner of it. Co-owner of, of Diamond yeah. Supply, yeah. still, right? Yep. How did that come about? Because uh, well, I first time I heard it, I was like, "All right, cool." The pretty Mexican kids with the diamonds in their ears wear diamond and has a snake wrapped around a diamond. Because in Merced, there's no fucking skaters. Right. There's like six, and all of them are wearing etnies still. They're not wearing diamond back then. Right. Because I saw diamond and thought, "What fucking brand is it?" Then I found out it's a skate company, and I automatically went, "Okay." That's tight. It's getting popular. It's that popular. Skate. What? Tell me more. Right. So how did that come about? Um, well, Nick Trache was pretty much the you know the the main guy of Diamond Supply Co. And um, he started a boat company. And I definitely was just fond of the designs and everything. And we've known each other for quite some time. And I you know I t- asked him one day if like I could you know possibly get down. And luckily it was there was a a, a way for we to 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 figure this out. So we figured it out and, you know, I was able to join in the team and, you know, it was a beautiful thing. This happened in uh, 2009 in March. Wow. So that was like, yeah, pretty much almost over 10 years over ago. Over 10 years. Yeah, I was saying oh, almost 10. Fuck, it's yeah. over 10 years ago. Yeah, man. Wow. So what did you guys do to it? Just groundwork, uh, just putting in, because I know it started off as hardware, right? Totally. And then, I mean, the clothes fucking explode. Of course, yeah. yeah. Like I say, they all went back to design that, you know, obviously... Um, Nick was producing at the time um, and then he was just really keen on social media then you know so he was really kind of kept his ear to the street and um, one thing led to another and it just kind of blew up overnight you know and um, yeah it went from just hardware like a hardware company to like a damn streetwear brand for the most part one of the biggest ones I've, I've ever seen yeah honestly because yeah. if it's a Merced and you're wearing it that shit got big because we're a poor ass town right there ain't no brand dope shit over there especially <laughs> at our mall right <laughs> you know right, what I mean right right um, so how was that, man? How'd you, I mean, you're going from pro, pro skater. Now you're an adult, right? You know what I mean? Or adult. You're in, now into your, almost to your thirties at this point when diamond gets fucking big, mm-hmm. you're growing up and now you have a streetwear brand on your hands. How did, how'd you take that in? I mean, look, dude, it was like, I think the right place at the right time. And like the t- timing was amazing, bro. I think around, like I'd say around 2010, 2011 is when really things started t- to change dramatically, you know, from, a <laughs> like a $1.3 million company to like a, you know, I think a $25 million company in a matter of two years. And then you know, it just, it just was happening so fast. And it's just like, how do you control it? You know what I'm saying? We are two like skateboarders at the end of the day, That's the best you part. know? And yeah. It's it, amazing. Um, but to try to control that growth is pretty insane. You know what I'm saying? So we, we weren't able to control the growth and we just grew and grew and, you know, uh, got to a point where we were really, you know, doing really well, you know? And um, 
what do you do when you when you continue to do well? I mean, you gotta you gotta kind of change and you know change the format of what you're doing because things don't stay the same. You gotta yeah. kind of you know work with the times. Exactly. And um, yeah, man, it's, it was a it was a wild and fun ride. I can't say that. That's for sure. That's I mean that's how I met I met Omar through Diamond Shit. Yeah, he was and working I, with it for a while. Yeah, I I mean you see, we just got this warehouse. When I first saw that Diamond Warehouse, mm -hmm. it was unbelievable. So I can't sick. believe yeah. people actually threw that shit together like that. Yeah. Wow, there's a skate park in there. It's a fun house. Oh, yeah, man. It that's a fan. Cool, that's a real fantasy factory, right? Straight there. up. It that was it was, was awesome. like the second fantasy factory. <laughs> it was sick, dude. I, I the first time I ever went in there, the giant or was it like the conference room was a giant fucking night. Was it a, like a glass like sculpture or some shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, there it, just the the way that Nick designed the whole office is amazing. It was definitely like eye, it's eye candy for sure, you know, to everybody that came in there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that, that's that's awesome, dude. I had to bring that up just because it's it seriously took over the world for a while. Yeah, man. Like I said, it was uh, one of those moments in time that, you know, you wish you could kind of hold on to forever, you know. But then again, for that high amount of traffic and waking up every day on your phone doing it, it's kind of nice to go. Got You paid us? Sick. All right, yeah. chill. Yeah. Because yeah. it's been five years, man. It's been five years nonstop. <laughs> Let's slow down a bit. Now, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you always want to be continue to, to be successful, you know? Yeah, of course. But, you know, sometimes it's uh, yeah, it's, it's real daunting. It definitely could take a toll on you for sure. Nonstop. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw another thing. I've been to a couple of the diamond parties on Fairfax uh, mm -hmm. with Omar. You throw big ass poker games? Yeah, once a year during my birthday. Um, I've been doing it shit since I turned 30. So, damn, this was. This last year, we obviously weren't able to do it yeah. because of, you know, obviously the pandemic and everything. But the year prior to that, man, it was like one of our biggest ones. Uh, it was really rad. We had it over at uh, the Mota Group right over there at Green Street. Um, Green Street Agency? Yeah, Green Street Agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Exactly right before about. it's, I mean, obviously it still hasn't, I don't, has it opened yet? I'm not no, sure. No, they were building it. I talked to uh, his name. I can't remember his name. Uh, Super nice dude. But God, yes, the owner of Green Street. Yeah. Cool great, people. That's great what you have people it over there. Great people over there. Yeah. Um, like I said, at the Mota Group, which is right next door. I guess they had offices next door w anticipating, you know, the new building to open and whatnot. So they, they were fucking graceful enough to, like, lend us the, the space for the evening. And, yeah, it was really dope, dude. So Omar you, fucking DJ, it was dope. Oh, this is the last, this is the, the two years ago then? Yeah. So what do you expect of one of these poker? Because that sounds scary as fuck. Hey, I'm inviting all my friends. Are they all pro skaters or are they actual poker this players? This last one was, was like it? a mixture of everybody from like the, you know, weed industry, from fucking skate industry, just all walks of like just friends. It's It's been one of those grassroots things. It's like word of mouth that it's just gotten to that point now. I'm just like, damn, we got, I got an actual fucking poker tournament here, you know? Nice, dude. From like a house tournament to like a full blown, like, yeah. How many people tournament. do you think? This last one was like at least 50. Damn. Yeah, it was dope. You winning, are people winning money for real? Like yeah, that? I mean, it was a definitely, I think, top 10 got some money. Really? Yeah. I fucking trash it, but that sounds sick. Yeah, it was dope. Too. That's just a cool experience, man. It's cool that, I mean, I'm just stoked that people, you know, were consistently coming for the last fucking 15, well, 13 oh, years for the most part. There it is right there. Yeah, dude. Damn, that's the Green Street one? That, that no, room? this was the one that was at, uh, I think this was at Diamond. I had, oh, yeah, I had it the at, I had the Diamond store for probably like three years, give or take. Yeah. Trophies and all, yeah. 11th annual? Damn, you guys are, you made a tr glass trophies? Yeah. You guys are serious. Yeah, it turned into something special, bro. Are you any good? I'm decent, yeah. yeah. I'm, I mean, I've I definitely placed top ten at least, at least six, seven times. So. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I was saying, do you win your own trophy? You I haven't won. My, I haven't won one yet, man. You still waiting. Your own trophy. <laughs> Straight up, no holds bar. <laughs> Fuck it, dude. Um, yeah, no. I, I wanted to bring that up. I saw it online. Like, damn, that must be a fucking. That must be scary. How much money you got to walk into that place with? I mean, to be honest, it's like the buy-in's only a hundred bucks, and then you got to rebuy a hundred bucks. Poker. So it's like, yeah, it's not too bad, you know. Okay, yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking bringing weed people and at pro skaters. Like, but then when they when it, when you when people get uh you know um they are out. You know, we have side tables with cash games and whatnot, too. So there was a lot of other exciting things going on, so too. It's not like some Vegas seriousness where everybody's mad when they No, nah, nah. Okay. It's a, it's a fun it's environment. It's a friend you know, poker we're game. Playing, listening to music, smoking, hanging, drinking. Yeah, dude. Sick. Yeah. Sick, dude. Um, nice, nice. I wanted to... I know it's completely... I'm bound... You could do Bear with you me. Do. Bear of with course. me, all right? <laughs> Following your lead. Following Bear your lead me. here. I have a bunch of things in my head. So, like you talked about earlier... You're a kid, you're yeah, getting sponsorships, you're at school, like, yeah, I'm sponsored, doing my shit. What was the first 
real brand that you went home that day and go, yo, mom, I got fucking sponsored by, like, what was that first spark of holy shit? I might do something with this. Right. Um, Solomon Aga was a big part. So I'd say real being, getting on real skateboards for real? A, a brief moment. Yeah. It was nice. definitely a, how old were you? Uh, shit. That was probably like 14. Yeah. Like, Fuck. Yeah. Going, turning, getting ready to turn 15. Yeah. Give or take. Damn, getting on the crazy. skate team? Yeah. So you were that kid where everybody's looking, yo, he's a young-ass boy hitting rails. Yeah, man, it was one of those <laughs> things. But it was, it's crazy because, obviously, um, real skateboards is based in, in the Bay. So it's in San I didn't Francisco. Know that. Yeah. So um, I would get up to the Bay every now and then and, and, you know, obviously be able to visit. But it was one of those things where I kind of, like, got sponsored, you know. Um, there wasn't really anything formal. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, you know, he got some boards, and then next thing you know, I had an ad come out for real yeah really yeah and then um fuck it was so lame probably like i'd say two weeks later i ended up quitting because of the timing and the situation of me meeting tim gavin and and him skating for blind and he basically wanted me to skate for blind and blind was a la based company so and it was blind and you know obviously at the time fuck it was like tim gavin uh guy mariano fucking just just legendary shit people that make you want to be better definitely you know and to be a part of that group i was just like dude let's go you know what i mean and i felt bad in hindsight obviously quitting real but timing it was in the moment yeah you're in high school you only get to frisco (laughs) yeah i mean look i can make excuses about it but at the same time it was just like uh, it was a perfect it was a perfect thing for me to like kind of like just jump into you know so what was it like do what was it like being on the team what do you what was what can somebody expect like what do you do all day on the team? What are your what skate. are you guys doing? That's it all you day. Skip, skate. All day. Yeah. Skate and try to produce and get you know film and you go to contests occasionally and you know you take photos. Damn. It's I mean it's 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 an ideal situation if you're just a skateboarder, you know what I mean? Yo, like you just make me so happy. Like, it's super cool, bro. Shit. Really. As a kid, that's all I ever watched. Like the closest thing we had besides skate videos on TV was Brank. Mm. You guys remember fucking whack ass brink, <laughs> fucking rollerbladers and shit. Oh, yeah. There was nothing sick on TV. There yeah. was no kind of anything until one day, fucking Tony Hawk Pro Skater came out, and that was it. Oh yeah, that and that's what it. that changed mm-hmm. every mainstream person looking at skating. That was definitely opened the doors for you know just skateboarding had arrived. Dude, like when X Games came out, mm-hmm. do you remember? I remember it was like what ninety seven or six. I feel yeah, maybe a little right. earlier. Yeah, sounds about right. But when that shit came out, I'm on TV. Like, you know, for me, I'm sitting here trash ass skateboarder. I can only go fast downhill. I can't do tricks. I'm not a little fat kid, <laughs> but I love that shit. I'm always hurt. <laughs> but for me, watching basically all your peers, probably you mm-hmm. and all these skate because we didn't have YouTube. Right. My friend had skate videos. Oh, yeah. uh, you ever seen this one? Uh, there was one. Uh, I can't remember the skater, huge fucking hair, but he cracked his fucking head open on like a 10 stair mm-hmm. and it went into like a cartoon. They didn't really show him all fucked up. Mm-hmm. That's the first skate video I ever watched in my life. And okay. I got hooked. Amazing. I got hooked. Yeah, those, those first skate videos do it. Yeah. yeah. You, we watch the right one. Definitely. It can definitely oh, change. Dude, it's, it's, a, it's like watching. It's like watching a podcast. You start looking at these people like friends. You start getting to know them a little more. It's more. Oh, yeah. It's it's a little more in depth, and nobody had ever really done that before. For sure. So, what, what was the first video that you were, you were featured in? Uh, that I was featured in. Um, shit, it would have to be that when it came out. You're like, get the fuck out of here, it's me. <laughs> uh, the FTC video, I think, was probably one of the first ones. But um, Goldfish, I'd say between Goldfish and, and the FTC video. But I think it was the FTC video that I had uh, like a first like full part. And it's a FTC is a is a skate shop in the Bay. Um, there it is, right there. Um, hey, oh man, you're a child and my little, right little, there, little man. Dude right here, man. Yeah, you're a little kid. Wow. But yeah, this still is still killing uh, it though. Fuck, it's crazy to look back, man. It's, how do you, how does that make you feel, man? Look at you could do all of these things still. I'm totally. just saying, like, look totally. at you as a child. Wow. I wasn't the, the guy that was jumping down shit. I occasionally jumped down stuff. So, you know, obviously I was more of a surface <laughs> trying to stay on the ground type shit. Yeah, type trying skateboard. to break your back and shit. Um, so some of the stuff, yeah, I can still do this shit. But, yeah, these are just the times, man. See, that just, um, that just reminds me of having fun as a kid and watching that kid. Because I'm like, yo, look, that kid's good as fuck. And I'm just garbage. But I stay at the skate park, watch people. That's crazy, yeah, it's man. Crazy, bizarre, but yeah. You probably what 16, fun 17? times, yeah. No, this is still like 15, 16. Really, give or take. 
Yeah. Because I was on, it's fuck, it's up, it's blind right here. So, yeah, I'm like, it's crazy, man. That's sick. Man. Yeah, the, the years get distorted too a little bit, bro. As you know? you're, I mean, once you get to a level of like, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing, years go by fast. Super fast. It kind of scares me. It really. I just turned 31. And I remember you're I was, still young, bro. You're but still but young. I remember when I was 24, going, I'm gonna do this shit. If it doesn't work out by the time I'm like 28, I'll stop. And right. 28 came by, I was doing so much, I forgot the years going yep. by. Yep. When they I look back, go, right by you. oh, that's right. That's not me. I'm, I'm a kid. I'm not a kid no more. It's crazy. I man. forget. Man. I trip on it, man. Like I mean, fuck. I just turned 44, and I don't think I don't feel 44. I, I used yes. to look at people when they're like, I'm like, damn, damn you're old, as fuck. you know. And now I'm just like, fuck, I'm, I'm in it. Like, and here we are, you yep. know, but, but I don't feel like that. It's a all. whole different thing. Well, how is. do you feel? You know what I mean? I don't feel 31. I feel like I'm a, I just got out of high school. I exactly. don't really remember anything. Exactly. Do you have any kids? I do. Yeah. I have one kid. He's uh five and a half. His name is legend. Hey, and, uh, nice. Yeah. He's <laughs> fucking uh, lights up our world, bro. Real shit. Oh, no way. He's going to fucking love that about high school. Oh, What's yeah. your name? Don't even want to know. I bro. know. I see. I thought about that too. Is he gonna get teased and shit? No, like not day, one nah, person's he, gonna talk. He's shit. gonna live up to his name. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that. Oh, he's a legend by any means. I think it's just the fucking. It's a name. By it. It's just a name. This, that's people, right when I say that to people, like they're like, "Damn, that's a fucking crazy." Exactly. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. No, he's five and a half. Yeah. Skating yet? No, man. He's he, I, he likes stuff to come easy to him. Really? So it's like one of those things. I'm trying to present it to him, and he's just like. Nah, you know, not feeling, you know it? not feeling it too much, you know, and not, not that he's, I think, I don't know, man, it's, I think, I don't want to push it on him, you know, of course not. that's one of those things I'm just like, I'll let him like, I'm gonna set up a board for him and like, exactly. try to just present it, but I'm not trying to like, you know, kind of, you know, force you him to learn? do it, yeah, I'll try, I'll teach you, yeah, but one yeah. thing that I have been doing, I've been, you know, I'm, I picked up golfing like three, probably three years ago, and he wants to go to the driving range and, you know, I got him a little set. So that's kind of dope. I'm like kind of seeing like, you know, he what does want to try certain do. things, yeah. certain things he's just like a little timid, intimidated by, which is fine. Yeah. Like you're saying, he's wants shit to come easy. Skating's not fucking easy. Nah, dude. But neither is golf. So I mean, it's he's not, got but stuff, it's fun. Yeah. He's got himself set up. He, yeah. you he know? can suck and still have fun at the driving range. That's man. damn true. You know what I mean? True. Especially for kids. Yeah. Nice. So he's five and a half. You, are you married? I am. How I am long? married to my high school sweetheart. So, uh. Shit, we've been married for 13 years wow. and uh, together for fucking 27 20, years. Yeah, 28 years going on. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you, bro. Hell so yeah. you guys are good friends then. Hell yeah. It's the my only, best friend. That's, that's the only way it's going to work. Yeah, dude. Straight up. I found her early, man. That's one of those things. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to, you know, because at the end of the day, I know how rare this shit is. Like, you people don't stay in relationships like that. Yeah, dude. When I was, uh, she was 15, I was 17. Well, so. you know exactly what class you met her in. Where'd you meet her at? Uh, Spanish class. There you go. I knew you would remember. Yeah. She's your best friend. Like, I remember when she walked in. I yeah. said, hello. Oh, yeah. Definitely. No shit. Yeah, super rad, man. That's fucking cool, man. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Well, I'm a loyal ass dude, too. So it's one of those things, with, you know, even with friends, like, I'm just, you know, it's one of those things, like, I have longtime friends as well, you know, 30, at, yeah, my one of my best friends I've known from since I was, like, 10 years old, so 34 years, man. Wow. Yeah. That's a trip, man. That's so sick. High school, same girl. That's great. Yeah, man. How cool. And good thing. Good for you guys. Waited to have a, have a kid. Yeah, I mean, it was one of, it, it, we had issues, you know. It, it wasn't like a, you know, a lot of people could just, you know, boom, and this happens. You know? Got you. Us, we had to, you know, we, we did uh, in vitro. We had to take the, the route. Really? Yeah. How yeah. was that? It was, uh, it was different, you know, obviously. Um but all in all, I mean, it, we have a beautiful little boy that, you know, you know, we had to we had to spend a little bit of money. But that's it comes with the territory with the, yeah. you know, IVF. So um, it was a cool experience. Definitely. Like I said, it wasn't, your, you know, your normal, your yeah. natural way to do it. But Nothing wrong with that. at least we had options. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So how cool and very man. thankful that, you know, that that option was there. You know, were you guys trying for a long time? Do you realize you have to try in vitro? Definitely. You know, and one oh. of those things, it's like, you know, I had to stop smoking. I had to stop drinking. There was a lot of things that I had to do. Oh, to, to kind see of, what it was. Yeah, because, you know, you had to go do, you know, your test and, you know, see what, what you're doing down there, you know, and see how that's working, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I had to I had to be disciplined myself and do some things that, you know, I had to change my lifestyle a little bit, you know. And it was for that brief moment, but, you know, 
after everything was said and done, you know, we, you know, we were able to do whatever we wanted to again after that. But, you know, he's That's here cool. now, so it's, yeah. it's all good, you know. Is thinking about any more kids or no? I would love to, you know. Um, it, like I said, time is of the, the essence in the sense of we don't have that much time. So if we are, we're going to we have to do it now. You know, um, is that something you're thinking about? Yeah, we've been thinking about it. It's okay. just like we got to either do it or just fucking hang it up and figure it out. Oh, you know shit. Saying? This so. is the one. This is the episode, man. Yeah. This is the- no, I mean, we've been this is like something we've been talking about, you know, um, whether we're going to make the fucking official like we're doing it now. Like, no, that's not the case. I think, like I said, if we're going to do it, we, we definitely have to figure it out here in the next. I'm like saying like six months type shit. Damn. So, yeah. Well, another life changing thing is about to happen. I know, really. If we Decision take that step, either way, either if we way. take that step, you know. Wow, man, that's that's awesome. I've been with my girlfriend, well, fiance now. We got engaged last week, actually. We've been together, really? yeah, since we Congrats. were twenty two. There yeah. you go. So you're in this. You're, you're yeah, on your way too. You're on your way as well. Yeah, exactly. That's when I hear, I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, nine years is no joke, bro. I mean, straight up, it's, you're on your way. That's so sick to hear, man. You're all mm-hmm. hyped when you said it too. That's fucking awesome. That's how yeah. I feel. People look at me like, for real. Like, you don't feel that way? Yeah, dude. Fuck. No, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm truly blessed and, and, you know, thankful for, for my wife. That's for sure. Awesome, man. Six, a legend. Five and a half, likes golfing. My, my dad won't skate and we'll see. <laughs> That's sick, dude. Yeah, dude. I shouldn't be smoking during the stereo ads. Right? Okay. <laughs> I just thought about it right now. Like, wait, should I light the rest of this joy? No, I shouldn't. Here we go. Ready? You let me know. Okay, I got it. What's up, guys? Thank you again. Oh, fuck. This is a mid-roll. Mid-roll. What's up, guys? Yes. Oh, sh- Train. Good Good timing. Fuck. Here we go. Ready? Oh. What's up, guys? This is another mid-roll at... Oh, fuck you. What's up, guys? Thank you again for being part of the podcast. Thank you so much for supporting. And if you're here right now, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Guys, let's get right into this. Thank you so much again. We are finally... Like normal podcast people, we have a sponsor. And our first sponsor, thank you so much for them for working with us. This is the Stereo app. For everyone out there that does not know what this is, this is basically a live chat for us. This is for the podcast. This is for maybe two to three times a week we go live. If you want to be part of the of the conversation, you can join in. If you want to just listen, basically like another extension of the podcast, except we're talking Q&A. Maybe it's Marty and I talking. Maybe it's just him giving tips on how to edit. Maybe it's me telling you how to grow your YouTube, whatever it is, it's going to be for us. It's not, it's not like another platform. You, you see what I'm saying? This is more for us. This is for the fans. This is more intimate talking. This is stereo app. So do me a favor right now. Click the link in the description, no matter if you're listening to Spotify, um, Apple, if you're watching on YouTube, the link in the description for the stereo app is our direct link. If you click that, you're really helping us out, guys. Click that. Follow, uh, I'm, follow us as dope as usual. Download the app. That's going to really help us out. I'm being completely transparent. Like I said, this is us, guys. Um, the more you guys follow, the more we can do more. The more the more we get fucking paid. So, all right? So, help us out. Help us get. Help us make the podcast bigger. Help me and Marty alleviate some of these motherfucking stresses. I appreciate you guys. But, yeah, like I said, this is more intimate talking. This is just for us. Stereo app. Click the link in our description. Thank you guys so much for listening to me rant. I appreciate it. Have a dope-ass day. Back to the episode. I gotta remember not to say fuck during their ad read. Um, my next question. Um, as as in the '90s, early 2000s, the decks. That's all I can get. We that's all we can get. We didn't have a Zoomies or a, we had a Paxson. I think it was right. That's where you can buy decks at. Right. I've seen you have a shitload of decks. Pro, pro. Yeah, that's like, you know, me just collecting. Um, <laughs> that's dope. That's that's your baseball card, man. Yeah. That's a skating baseball card. Like, yeah, you got the deck? Yeah, I got the original and the plastic. Yeah. yeah what was your first one? Fuck. If you can remember. like I know you've had so many, but. My first. Uh, the first official. Pro deck or my first pro. board. Like first bo- uh, board that I've ever got type deal. No, the first pro. Oh, you know what? No, no, no. What's the first deck you ever got? For yourself, um, exactly. I had a somebody give me a, a Steve Rocco like mini freestyle board. That was kind of like one of my first boards that I had. That it wasn't a brand new, but someone gave it to me. But I remember it was just like a Steve Rocco mini because I was a small kid, you know, when, at ten years old. I was fucking little, you know. So a, a freestyle board was actually appropriate at the time, which is like you know, 
like a banana thinner, board? Thinner, you know, thinner board and, you know. Not like a banana like, board. Not a banana board, no. It was more like a freestyle board. Flat, you remember, you no remember curves. Free, there was, no, there was curves on it. Wow. Yeah. But freestyle not, skateboard. Yeah, it's a little. I don't think I've ever seen one before. Yeah, really? Or maybe I'm not. Marty, can you bring that up? Freestyle skateboard? Like a freestyle board. It's like a. Oh, those circle ones. The smaller, thinner boards. Boards these days are like, you know, people like skating eight and a half. At that time, they were probably like the fuck fucking like six and a half, six and a half inches wide. So they're like super small. Yo, you just schooled the shit out of me right now. I don't <coughs> I've never seen one of these fucking boards in my life. That's funny. What? Yeah. Oh, those ones. Sorry, Marty. Yeah. I thought you were talking about those ones. Those are like long boards. I'm dumb. I was looking at the wrong no, picture. No, you're not dumb. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong fucking picture. <laughs> um, so what was your first pro deck? Girl skateboards. So girl pro, turned me pro uh, in 97. Oh, shit. Um, was it 97? 96, excuse me. And um, yeah, man, it was like a year after I t- uh, graduated high school. And um, I, I think I did my first, cro- my first pro contest with the uh, Slam City Jams in Vancouver. So that wow. was kind of like the coming out. So party right out of high school went to your first. If, did you get flown? You had to like, yeah, block. we got flown out there. Was, Ooh, yeah, that dope. Must have been ball, yeah definitely. No, I mean, they skateboarding got me all over the world, bro. I'm really like blessed from that standpoint. I have re- literally been everywhere it's, for it's, skateboard contests, just no, not contests, just in general. Like, for, oh, just to go skate, yeah, like for demos and just traveling in general. Yeah, um, sorry, my bad, guys. That was. The loudest sound on earth. <laughs> Sorry. I scared. I thought someone kicked our door in right now. I'm scared <laughs> the fuck out of me. My bad. I looked over concerned as shit. Um, so you've been everywhere to skate. So if you're saying your first contest was you said Slam City Jam? Yeah, that's like that was a it was a contest they had in uh Vancouver, Canada every well, they had probably had it I'd like to say three years. It was very short lived. So for these contests, you walk for everyone out there that doesn't know. This is a street contest or flat? Yeah, street contest. They would have obstacles and stuff, yeah. Nice. So for everyone out there that probably not familiar with skateboarding, you've seen this before. It's like a fake park, and you go out there, you have, what, two minutes, three minutes? A minute. A minute? Yeah. Oh, shit, I thought it was way longer than that. Yeah. Oh, Damn, man. a minute? How yeah. was the first one? Have uh, you ever been in a contest like No, I've been, in, I've been in contests, but I was an amateur. The pros, like, I was definitely, gotcha. like, in my head thinking about it a little bit too much. Um, but, yeah, you got to go out there and put it together for a minute and... You know, I, I landed a couple things and, and probably bailed the rest. So, you know, and that minute goes by really fast, as you know. So, um, yeah, but all in all, it was, it was it was a fun first experience for my first pro contest. Wow, man, that's yeah. so sick. You go out there, you get in the hotel. Go oh, it was do fun, pro, too, bro. Yeah. Pro. Oh, my God. That's you know, just. They, they have party and stuff, too. Shit. It's pretty dope. Like, and at, at that time, I think. Fuck. I think it's at 19 years old to get into like, you know, bars and shit out there at that time. So. Oh, in Canada? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's not 21 or anything. Nice. So, yeah. Is it 18? It could be 18. One or the it's other. probably 18, man. Yeah, Canada seems it's, like it's the shit. Yeah. So Canada, close. Vancouver is fucking sick as fuck. I never Beautiful. Been. Beautiful city. Skated over there. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. city. Like, all in all, just, yeah, really great people. Dope city. It's like one of those ones, like, I would probably live there. I could I really? would live in Vancouver for sure. Vancouver, Canada. I mean, I lived in Portland, so I, it's kind of close, I guess. It's I not too know. far. Not too far. Mm-hmm. But everyone does seem nicer when you the the less hot it gets, everyone just gets nicer. I feel. I've like. had some funny <laughs> funny shit happen out there, man. I was like a like a Seven Eleven randomly right down the street from our hotel, and I was picking up some like whatever some snacks and shit, and fucking um, I check I checked my and I didn't I forgot my wallet, and I'm like, damn, I've come back. Can you hold the stuff here? I'll be right back. And the dude behind me was like, no, no don't worry about it. I'll, I'll pay for it. I was like, huh? It was probably like $10 for the shit. Like, Damn. But like, just. In 1996, go, like, $10? Man, it was $22. I just thought it was really a fucking Holy amazing shit. thing for this dude that didn't know me. That, that Hey, I'll pay for it. Don't worry about it. Like, okay. That's how you guys do it out here. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, I don't know. All Canadians are nice. I mean, I had great experiences out there. So, yeah. So Vancouver, so the guy's just paying for your shit. Yeah. First time being, was that when you were there? Yeah, it was my first time out there and first time, you know, in that city. And just like I said, it was just a random, like, thoughtful thing to do, I guess, for somebody. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, super cool. That shit never happened before. That's why I'm like, damn, they're pretty tight out there. <laughs> no, that happened to me. I was about 
eight years old, and I used to go buy WWF wrestlers at the store in my town. Those big ones? Uh, no, they were like the seven inch ones okay. that were like harder rubber. Yep. The WWF guys. Yep. And it was buy one, get one free. And I was like 60 cents short. And I remember I look at the cashier. I'm like seven years old. Like, oh, you motherfucker. And this lady behind me is like, no, don't worry. And I remember I looked at her like, thank you. Thinking, people help people. Mm-hmm. I never had nobody help me ever before. No one offered to give me shit. Totally. This lady ran. And that's what like opened my head. Like, maybe there are nice motherfuckers out here. There is. I don't know. Are. That's that's the first time that ever happened to me and like yeah. sparked a little Man. That feeling. Yeah. I remember. I mean, I, like I said, it's one of those things. It's a highlight that stood out for me, especially. Yeah, all these years later. And it happened to be in Vancouver. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Nice, man. So, I wanted to ask you, I, everybody that, that's noticed, all right? I mean, for everyone that's not high as shit and haven't noticed, the <laughs> Nine Club on your sweater. Yeah. The podcast you're part of. Yep. Can you tell us a little about that? I watched two episodes the other day. Dope. It's very informational yeah like, i feel like i was learning some shit right off the bat it's it's not just banter i feel mm-hmm. maybe because you guys aren't fucked up but right i feel like you guys are on your shit well then again it is your feel but i feel like i was learning more than i was just sitting there watching skate videos and shit right so how did you get to come about that i know you told me earlier that you came a little late into right. the start right right so um chris roberts and roger bagley uh created this this platform called the nine club um say uh, close to five years ago if not over five years ago um basically they just interview skateboarders initially when it started off they just come and you'd interview you know any of your favorite pro skateboarders um and then they evolved into a weekly show called the experience where it's like um we just talk about what's happening on a weekly basis in the skateboard industry so you know obviously people putting out video parts and you know it, it could be Nike releasing a shoe, it just anything like that revolves in skateboarding. So the podcast is is essentially a skateboard podcast, but we don't want to be subjected to just skateboarding. Yeah. So you know, culture. It's basically a culture, yeah, uh, podcast for the most part. Nice. But nice. you know, it's it's. I've been on since August. Um, I, I the first initially going on, I went on as a guest. So I've been on oh, as a guest. That's how it started. Yeah. But these are my friends. I've, like yeah. I said, I, cho- Girl in Chocolate skateboards um, are obviously like family, if you don't know, and now you know. <laughs> um, but Chris and Justin, which are two of the people that are on the, the Nine Club, um, are on Chocolate. So I've, I've traveled with these guys. I've, you know, they're, like I said, close friends of mine. Um, so it made it a little easier for me to kind of, you know, naturally – I guess be a part of the podcast, so to say. Talking with your friends. Yeah. So it makes it easier to, you know, I never envisioned myself being on a podcast by any means, but in this, in this way and fashion, it's fucking easy, you know? It's what you know, man. Yeah. Have you ever done anything like that before where you're on camera talking? I mean, I've been in other, you know, I've had other interviews where, yeah, where. You know, well, had, I mean, interviews are one of the, have you ever had to be on something to where you have to continuously talk like that? Because I know it's so, it's no, so this is the first time. Right? No, this is the first time. That was the first time initially. And now that I'm in it, it's, yeah, it was, it was a little different. But like I said, I think it made it easier because I was so comfortable with them. Yeah, of course. You know? People if you it was uh, me just coming into an arena where I was just like the, a new guy and I didn't know any of these people, it would have been a little different for sure. Like going yeah. to a new school. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It definitely wouldn't, yeah, it would have took a, a little uh, adjusting. Not that I wasn't adjusting while it's happening, but, you know, it, it definitely made it a lot easier. Who are some of the guests you've had on there? Besides, I mean, you do all pro skaters, So right correct? now, they, there's a, basically, obviously, since the pandemic, they had to kind of pivot oh, yeah. and do, they couldn't do the in-person thing. So they did, a, they f- formulated another show called Stop and Chat. So the Stop and Chat is kind of a, a format based on, previous guests so guests that have already been on they come on again and they do it via zoom and it's just like a catch-up from when they were on previous previously um so that's kind of been working in this you know obviously in the state that we're in right now i think to where we're going to get back is you know i I don't know what what date that's going to be it's kind of hard to be like all right this is the date because I think Chris and Roger, they don't want to have any um, any downplay or any any hiccups in the sense of like if they're going to be starting again, it's going to be on a weekly basis again. So as far as like get, trying to recruit guests, they don't want to have any hiccups. They want to make sure that if we are moving forward, then we're going to have guests stay consistently gotcha. ready, you know. Yeah. So um, 
as of right now, there's no, you know, no, no date dialed in because of just the state we're in. Um, but it's going to be sooner and later. I would, I would imagine so. Cause it seems like things are starting to pick back up. People are going to get their the people are vaccines outside, and man. shit. So. I know it's just crazy. It's psycho bro. It it's really is. It's so wild to see in mass everywhere still. I mean, I'm not comfortable with it. I don't think I'll ever it be It makes me feel off. It does. Like I mean, I'll therapy. wear it when I need to wear it, you know, out and out and about and stuff. But dude, I feel some way, some some way about it. If I'm like taking my son on a bike ride in my neighborhood and some shit, like I'm not trying to wear a mask. It's so. If I see somebody coming, all right, I'll throw it on real quick. But yeah, if there's anybody around me, I have to have it on just because maybe something got on my clothes and you're susceptible to being sick and I get you sick as fuck. I'm gonna feel terrible. Totally. I mean, it's just str- just being courteous at this point. Yeah, that's all it is at this point. Get away from me! I'll get away from you. It sucks, man. No, it's it's yeah, it's not the way to live. That's for sure. It's so different, man. Mm-hmm. It's so different. Uh, your kid would have been in your legend would have started what kindergarten? Uh, he will start kindergarten next year. So right now he's like in the, the in transition, the transitional, yeah, where we <sighs> kind of took a year because fortunate enough that you know when I say fortunate, the unfortunate situation that we're in. Um, he was able to get into a pod with three other kids and like kind of like a guest house at somebody's house and they have a, an actual teacher. So he's actually getting, you know, you know, a really school, school education. education in a sense without the whole zoom thing. I mean, the whole zoom thing is so bizarre to me, but it is what it is. Pod means classroom. Yes. Sorry. I didn't explain on that yeah. about that. <laughs> just, just in case I, yeah. I was a little, yeah. A pod a is pod? A, a little, a little classroom pretty much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's going crazy. back to the 1800s. I it's know, Classes dude. of five. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. So, so crazy, bro. I mean. But fortunate enough, damn. he's able to, you know, at least have that for now. Because if he was just at, how, if, at home and, like, just on Zoom, like, and not really able to engage with other kids, it's just, it's not. This sucks for kids, man, right now. I honestly, I think about it now. Like, kids these days have no idea. Now, I have no idea what it'd be like mm. to not be able to do my senior year. Oh, because man. I'm stuck at home on all oh, that. Hell would be, that no. sucks for like I feel for I people feel that so are graduating bad, high school or man. graduating college and shit. And they and, like anything, just yeah. missing out. Or your your son's gonna what? Start kindergarten mm-hmm, next year. With knowing there's four kids in class, mm-hmm. that's a whole different world. Well, he's gonna probably go to uh, public school next year, so it, it, I'm sure that they're gonna figure it out. But I know it's not gonna be no mm-hmm. four kids. They'll probably be. 12 kids, you know what I'm saying? Or, or you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what it is. Yeah, we'll have to see. That's wild. Though. Man. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine, man. I don't, I don't know if I could do this one. It's crazy, bro. I don't think I could. It really is. I would be sneaking the fuck out of my house. I'd mm-hmm. be doing something. Yeah. I would definitely be missing class while being at home. No doubt. I couldn't do no it. No doubt. Um, I have a question for you, just off the top of your head. Yep. Say it's 1993 right now. We're in L.A. Where are we, Where's the best skate spots? Uh, 93, shit, I'll probably be either at the L.A. Courthouse um, or downtown or Las Feliz. There's Las Feliz uh, Elementary or Lockwood. Damn, These are both like you right know, legendary spots, you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. See, I'm not from, I'm from up north, but. Yeah, it'll be the Santa Monica Courthouse, Las Feliz Elementary, which is in Las Feliz, um, and then Lockwood, which is in, dude, it's in, it's in a fucking the cuts you gotta like yeah you gotta be Taking you gotta be careful and shit you gotta be careful going to lockwood yeah really yeah some game banger shit yeah damn it sounds like merced that sucks yeah, but now but like the, the, you know the, the gangsters they would let the skaters do their thing for it's sure it's different now oh there he's getting it there it is damn marty you yeah. already brought it up i love it bro that's the back end of it but lockwood super sick. there it is there it right is. there yeah that's the the little place because there's banks there and shit they're used to, uh, yeah, they're still there. They're still there. Amazing, bro. The Sick. technology, man. I, love I know, it. he just brought it up yeah, right now. Yeah, <laughs> In so seconds, dope. man. Love it. That's so dope. Yeah, these man. are legendary spots in, yeah, around that time, 93. So I got a question for you. Have you seen that movie, The Mid-90s? Yes. Definitely. How... What's it was good. I got to give it to him. He did a really good job with it. You know, um, I think this new movie that's coming out uh, that Illegal Civ just did that um, they're depicting uh, kind of how it is to become a skateboarder. And I'm really anticipating to see it as well. I'm what's, having a space moment. I can't remember the name of the fucking movie at the moment. It's well, it's coming out soon. It's coming out soon. Um, fuck. God damn. Why am I having this fucking 
illegal civilization. Why am I not fucking the thinking skate that? movie? Yeah, dude. There's like some really heavy hitters in it, like Vince Vaughn's in it. What? There it is. Boom. It's gonna be a really, uh, like I said, it's called North Hollywood. There it is. Um, North Hollywood. So I think, yeah, watch out for this. It's gonna be, you know, I think it's gonna be really authentic to what, to how it is to become a, a pro skater. It's um, no shit. Yeah, dude. Well, yeah, that's why I brought up the mid '90s, just because I thought, yo, this little kid's me. That little yeah. boy, I'm like, yeah, that was me. Hey, I was just I hung out with such older people. Totally. Started getting fucked up. I don't know. I just. I Same shit. I think I call it. Loved it. Yeah. No, Mid 90s was a really good movie. But uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing the North Hollywood movie. Nice. As well. I said straight to it. was a Netflix movie, right? Netflix is the new theaters, man. That's ridiculous. I know, dude. It's like going right to like it's going, oh, Prime or fucking it's Netflix. Crazy, or, yeah, yo, Amazon. make it dark in here, man. All right, we're at the movie theater. That's the new going out, man. Yeah. It's fucking weird. Maybe they're having the, like the drive-in theaters now too that I've seen cool, pop though. up. I yeah, fuck with that. I do too. That's really that brings cool. back that old like. Yeah. That's very cool. Then I've, you can smoke weed in your car. Straight up, <laughs> and then you can smoke weed at the theater. Straight up. <laughs> yep. New shit. Nice, man. North Hollywood movie, but it was a. I I can't deny it. Mid mid nineties was a really good movie, and it definitely you know, it was authentic to a degree. Yeah, for me growing up just as a little kid trying to skate still and getting fucked up, that I, I was just, I loved it. Relatable, yeah. for I sure. I loved it so much. Yeah. Um, I have a clip I wanted to show you real quick, Marty. Can you bring up that first clip? Yeah, I got this clip I want to show you. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion on this? I think it's a mint. Uh, what is it? Second twenty six. Oh, this dude's gnarly. Watch this. Look at this right here. Look at this. Look at this fucking guy. Yeah, that's that's jo was that Jaws? Fuck. I have no idea. Look yeah, at this, this shit. Yeah, I mean, there's that's some stuntman shit, you know. That's stuntman I think shit. That is it Jaws. literally stuntman shit. We just we just actually did a, a stop and chat with Jaws, so that's with he, with he, that skater right there. With this dude right here, yeah. He's gnarly. That's what? What, that's what he does, you know. I mean, we're all 20. That's like, what, 20 plus stairs? Yeah. It's fucked up shit. That shit's sure. insane, man. But that's what he does. It's so rad because, like, there's so many different types of skateboarders, you know. And he happens to be, like, that guy, you know. <laughs> he jumps down shit and, you know. I can't. I have a homie like that, but I'm not willing to yeah, dude, do he flew, that right he, there. He flew out there specifically to do that. To that spot. He, you know about to that this spot. video. Yeah. Where is this at? That is in Europe. I forget exactly where, but yeah, he it's a full blown <gasps> mission. Oh my god! Yeah, this no fool joke, is insane. Man. Skaters put it on the line. Yeah, that, I, I just that's no, I mean that's no joke, bro. That's just like, have you seen anything bigger than that? I'm sure you have seen it all. I mean, this is one of the biggest things for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You you picked it. <laughs> <laughs> Good shit. Yeah, yeah, saw, like, damn, this is ridiculous. I don't think I've ever seen something bigger than that. Mm-hmm. That's definitely one of them. That's unbelievable. Did he even land? Did he land it eventually? He did. He oh. went. He had to go back. He went back again and did it. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Because I think he got hurt right there. Oh, when he did the damn splits. Yeah. I wanted to bring this up. Look at this thing. Is it Jackass? Oh yeah. I don't even know. They made the biggest skateboard. I mean, no, I don't biggest? think it's Jackass. Look, they, whoever these people are, made oh, wow. it with the, with the, like the actual pieces. Yeah, just yeah. Giant. They they made the world's biggest skateboard. That's amazing. You can turn and everything wow. with that. Isn't that That's unreal? Psycho. Oh, was it them? Was it Rob that did it? I thought he did that shit. Is it him? I don't know, but that shit was unreal. I just saw it the other day and thought it was unbelievable. Look at that. Yeah, that's You can skate hard. off of it. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> like you need a giant to skate that thing. <laughs> that was tight as fuck. Um, the first time I was ever shocked was the Ronnie Mullen video. Right. The, uh, the um, compilation where he's at this back of the school. Mm-hmm. Remember that? What's the, what's the name? I don't remember. It's the Rodney Mullen. Um, uh, it's the first time I ever saw Dark Slide. Huh. It was probably the Plan B video. I can't remember. I just remember yeah. watching it. Just well, like I said, as a kid, and I sucked. Hmm. I'm looking at all this shit, so sick. Oh, this is the old oh, school yeah. one. This is like yeah. Where is this at? This oh, is Oceanside, 1986. That is. This is when I like was like. In awe, like I think it's eighty six, eighty seven, because I, I definitely was somewhat paying attention to a degree too. Wow! I think in eighty seven, Val Surf had a, like a crazy um, 
back to back where they had in the summertime they had like Alva come through and Powell like and all these crazy demos. And I remember going and, and checking it out at you, that you time. Went? Yeah, I went to the demos. Oh no. Yeah, and checked no, it out. No shit. Yeah. Wow, man. That's this is bef- this is pre skate videos. This is pre everything. They That's had videos. It was very selective. Like you could I remember you could like rent videos at like your your local video shop. You know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah. My friends just had them. I never know you could like rent search them. for Animal Chin and Holiday Havoc. They're like, you know, they were um they, like, I've never even heard yeah. of these. I've never these are like this. skate contest videos and stuff. What'd and you then, say? But Animal an, Havoc? Search, search for Animal Chin. It was like a pal video. You've never heard of that? No. Wow. No, let me see. This? The search for animal chin. Yeah. That's a pal. That's just a legendary old skateboard video that, you know. Oh, wow. It's legendary. It's Tony Hawk, Lance Mountain, everybody that was on Pal at that time. Tommy Guerrero, Mike McGill. Yeah, this is a. Look at this. It's old. I love it. I had a big fat board. It was a Pink Panther one, and it had the damn. I was like six, and it had the plastic grind rails. Remember nice. those skateboards? Yeah, rails, yeah. Yeah, that shit totally. was sick. I was like six or seven, and I had that. Love it. Wow, yeah, the boards just like that, the fat ones. Yeah. Damn. I remember Rob Deerdeck was going to make like a street league, try to make like a league out of skateboarding. Oh, he that, did. He did. That happened? Yeah, he did. He a did. street he league. He did a fucking phenomenal job with it. It's uh, shit, it fucking was around for like at least, it's still around, to be honest. They're, they're still doing it. What does that mean? Um, so it's basically it's uh it's a skateboard league. So it's a contest essentially. Um, but it's a you get scored on points throughout the year, and you know whoever scores the most points in all these contests that they have throughout the year, you know you're the oh best. for just that. God, you yeah. like some NFL shit. Yeah, exactly. What that is sick as well. It's all individuals though. You have to be on a team. Uh, no, no, you don't have to be on a team. It's 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 an individual sport as you know. Yeah. Um. But, you know, you have to qualify. They had probably have qualifying for, you know, certain people that weren't already kind of. Um, um, Brandon Beeble. Yeah, there's so many fucking skaters in it. Right there. Wow. Oh, shit. No, I've no, never it's seen official, this. Bro. It's official, bro. They definitely. Diamond sponsored a best trick contest there. It was a, yeah, it was a, it had a moment, man. It was definitely, I think it was probably had a good six years, seven years that it was really doing some t- some special things, man. The first time I ever went to Agenda, you guys are doing the best trick contest outside. Oh yeah, yeah, that was awesome. I never, I've never seen a con. I've never seen a contest. It's I'm from Merced. Right. I never seen nothing sick, but I never seen a, <laughs> a skateboard contest before. It was fucking awesome. Oh, you just saw that recently? No, it was probably five years ago. Oh, sick. That's it was, dope. It was tight though. Hell yeah, that shit was awesome. I've never seen it before, like in person. Mm-hmm. Um. Nice, dude. <laughs> Omar sent me that link. I had to bring Too that funny, shit up. Dude. Fucking, that's Omar's doing right there. Yeah, man. What is this right here? Girl skateboard. Girl. That's oh. what. That was when I was an amateur. That was like kind of right before I turned pro. It was just doing like a, a funny ad in a sense of you know working and program. So I was like made it seem like I was working and then you know obviously out skating at the same time. Yeah. How old are you? Fourteen, fifteen again? Yeah, that's like fifteen probably. Yo, 16. See, that shit's sick. Was that in a magazine? Yeah. That's tight. Yeah. Fuck. It's crazy. That's <laughs> dope. Um, I have one more clip to show you. Yeah. I wanted to bring up. You got it, Marty? I think it's the last one. This shit is hard as fuck. Oh, yeah. So I know it's weird. Probably. Pretty, this, the pretty sweet part. Yeah, this shit's hard as hell. I know it's just like, yeah, I watched it myself, but I just had to show <laughs> yeah, it. For course. everybody at home, I just wanted to show this. It's so fucking. I know yeah, there's a part I shared with uh, Brandon Beeble. I watched this twice last night. It's so fucking cool. Yeah, man, it's just watching people do stuff you would love to do but just can't. It's like right. watching fucking NFL football. It's like <laughs> watching basketball and Same everything. Same shit. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of basketball. Like I said, golf, any of that stuff. I, I admire anybody that's really talented in their craft. You know what I'm saying? So it could be anything that you do. DVS. Did you, 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 were, you were on D, uh Sponsored yeah, by DVS too, sponsored right? Sponsored by DVS from the beginning, you know. From the D- very beginning? DVS started in 95. I was on in the beginning. and Really? Yeah, and then, um, shit, I think around... I had DVS shoes. 2008 was like, yeah, the end of me being... Well, 2009. Really? Yeah. Damn, yeah. But DVS, DVS was rad. Definitely great times skating for them. I remember... Do you remember World Industries? Yeah. Ooh. 
Fuck yeah, of dude. Course. I remember that. The little fire. I had those shirts. I used to get made fun of because I'm in the fucking ghetto. And the little flame boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to get made fun of for all the skate gear I used to have. I used to have like um, America's shit and people would make fun of me because I'm, from, you know, in the fucking ghetto. I'm a fucking <laughs> fat little Mexican kid. Like, what is that shit? You don't even speak Spanish. Like, <laughs> you're a bitch. <laughs> Yo, it's, that shit sucked. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking about. It. Adolescent days, I know, bro. Going through those moments of, yeah. It was just a skate shit, too, because I loved it, and my homies were, like, the only other white kids and the other Mexican kid that skated. Mm -hmm. It's a small town. Totally. And I got it all. How far is that from here? It's, like, four and a half hours okay. on that train. There That's you go. my Four and a half hours go. on that fucking train. Hear that thing? <laughs> well, dude. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude. This is fun, bro. Thank you so much You for got a good on. little thing going on over here, bro. It's been cool, man. Hell I'm, yeah. uh... I'm excited for everything. Everything's going well. We're just getting it going. Like I said, you, I'm, I'm new to this. Yeah. You're just like you're saying you are like, oh, I just got it in August. It's a different. Oh, dude, it's, it's different. It's, it's super different, bro. It's I'm different. trying to just like, you know, just be in the moment with it at the end of the day. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's an opportunity that was presented to me and I'm just like, let's go, you know, and just have fun with it. You know, it's been, uh, like I said, unexpected that I would like it so much and like you know want to engage and, and really be down and to talk into the cameras and shit it's just like i didn't think i would be comfortable with it but like yeah it's 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 turned into something that i'm you know i'm happy to be doing at the moment and you're like oh i think i can get better doing this yeah oh, I dude i think with better. time for sure yeah. you know I with know, anything it's, you know exactly it's a whole new it's a i didn't think it'd be like another craft almost it is it is talking to your friends is cool it's fine Talking on camera with a conversation is a completely different story. It is definitely right. But as far as being the like the the, the narrator and the monitor, I think that's that's harder. Like so, you're oh, someone yeah. in your position and someone it's in like hard. Chris's position that's on um, the nine club. It's like that's a talent. I really think to kind of keep the the momentum of an interview going and like that you know where there's no dull moments, so to say. That shit is hard. So it's hard. Yeah, it's another job. It's fuck like, yeah. Ooh, now I gotta, I gotta think. I can't just say. Yeah, you know the fuck I'm talking about. Like, yeah, like seriously. Your friends, you're it's just like a flowy around. thing that just you know. Sometimes you really don't. You set up the guest, and then they just kind of take it on its own. And you yeah. kind of you know work it around the guest. So whatever they're talking about, then you could kind of formulate to, and kind of go on a tangent. So you could. There's ways that I'm starting to see. Like, damn. Okay, that's how it works a little bit. It makes it, you know kind of flows yeah dude because you know it, it can it can turn into like a fucking stale moment easy you know <laughs> i know what you mean straight no, up of course i do that shit by myself like i said uh i cut all my videos up sometimes i'll do that to myself just space out like oh yeah back to what i was talking about yeah imagine doing that shit on camera with people that shit was terrible yeah and then you try to go into the live <laughs> format like fuck, Ooh, you hell can't. you better be seasoned bro seasoned yeah that shit's hard man but it really with is with time like like you said you're doing it's the first time you've ever done like mm -hmm. long form interviews and this and you have your friends it's more comfortable it's, mm -hmm. it's and exciting. i'm not leading it that's why it makes it easier i'm like kind of just like the co-host which is fine for me like if, if i'm stepping into this i definitely want i don't want to be like the guy you know what i'm saying i'd rather be the co-host so i can see he, he can lean on me to a degree you know what i mean so yeah it's been like i said it's been great man i'm having right. fun with it sick dude um before i go i want to show you uh, i mean i want to show everybody at home you brought this i was just looking at this last night yeah this shit just got released today on did it uh, really yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's been out. It's been released internationally for a while, for the past like three weeks. But domestically, and now the Crayol Store, you can go to CrayolStore.com, which is a, a girl in chocolate uh, website. And oh, you can nice. Purchase, we'll you can purchase that right link now. Link in the description. Yeah. We'll put this link in there. Sick. This shit's hard as fuck. When I was in the tenth grade, I had a girl sticker on my binder. I mean, I didn't fucking do anything at school. Mm -hmm. but I had it on my binder. Mm -hmm. I just remember people like, "Why do you have a picture of a girl?" I'm like, you just don't know what's yeah. going on. My home, Anthony girl's had bathroom, chocolate yeah. shirts yeah. and shit. Yeah. So hearing you talk, we always about get it, questions about that. Sick. Like, what is that? Like, what, why do you wear that? It's, it's a board company. It's a company, man. Yeah, not the bathroom shit. It's a company. Mm -hmm. It's like it's back before. Like I said, back before people were like, "Yo, skating sick." Like, no, you skate, you probably smoke weed at the park and shit. Mm -hmm. You probably were, but you're still skating. Totally. You know what I mean? Totally. It's back before people were like, no, that shit's tight as fuck. X Games, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Tony Hawk, Rob <laughs> Deerdick made, made that shit so fucking They really, I mean, man. they put it on the map, man. Rob Deerdick as well, man. Big ups to him, man. He's definitely sure. a trailblazer, man. Yeah. Also, before we leave, I wanted to ask you about one more thing. Yeah. A different realm. 
Different. Something else you're doing. Blonde. Yeah. So it's a cannabis company. Yeah. Uh, so funny you bring that up. Okay, so about a year and a half ago, you know, me and a few other uh, of my entrepreneurial friends, we wanted to, you know, start a, a company. And we we came up with it. And we had some partners in Vegas. And um, the partners in Vegas who were working under this, this, this conglomerate, they got fired. And they were partners of ours. And they were basically the back end of the brand. Of your brand? Yeah. So after they got fired, we pretty much were like kind of dead in the dirt. So now we are, we're currently, we're trying to find a back end. Really? So yeah, right now it's a, we're, it's so been a little bit. So you back end, you mean the like, logistics of the company? Basically. I, like the, you I know, can help you actually with that. Yeah. Very easily. That would be amazing. I know exactly who to talk to. That would be amazing. So you already have this pre-existing company that you, did you curate this? Yeah, me and a few, but well, my buddy, uh, Chris Keith, he is, him and his wife are fucking so talented, man. And they, they came up with the name and the whole concept, the look, Ooh, the vibe. I it's, like that right It's there. got a really, really, really great aesthetic, man. And I'd hate for it to go to waste, that's for sure, because I think that it has a really, it has a... A are great you, vibe behind it. That's you're for sure. You're a co-owner, co what co-owner, you, co-owner. Yeah, I mean it's our brand at the moment, but like I said, if we don't have no back end, there's no brand. And what we of wanted course. to do was kind of be like have a play, like um, I wouldn't. I'm not trying to say like a cookies play by any means, but we were gonna have an apparel tied to it, but the apparel that it's gonna be more high elevated apparel. You know, I'm saying yeah, totally it's not you. gonna be like, like you what know, you're wearing right there. That's just this hard. is not real. This is not. High, like the, 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 the stuff that 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 we were doing with blonde is a little bit more elevated. The, the pieces were like you could Cut tell somewhere. the word. It's, it's like a, a really beautiful piece. It's not like just something that you can just you know print up. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, so yeah. like you're talking about one offs or just high quality, high fashion streetwear? Yeah, okay. kind of, but not really. You know, trying to stay in our lane, so to say. You know, we're not trying to go beyond. <laughs> you know, but like I said, it was really. Cool aesthetic, really plain pieces, that, but the, the materials are really great. It's not like, you know, you, like I said, you can't just go pick this up at fucking, you know. No, totally Zoomies understand and shit. that. But, Sick. Yeah. But, Different I mean, direction. Yeah. We wanted to try to elevate it a little bit because it's, I think there's room, you know, and there's so much room in, 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 the, in, the, in the marijuana industry, so to say, like, because there's so many different types of brands and, you know. If you know what there's market, room where you're going, there's room for any there's room. level and form you can think of. All of it, there's room for sure, a hundred percent. Yeah. So you're co-owner to that. Yeah. So now that the 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 uh, back end got pulled. the back end got pulled, we we own the obviously we own the brand a hundred percent. So you're just so we're kind of just sitting on it. And I'm, I'm meeting with people. I mean, I I met with my good friends over at Maven. You know, I mean, I have really people like some good people in the industry that you know I'm kind of leaning on. But like, to be honest, like I I don't really have that much money to put into this. Again more much more money to put into this so i definitely want to kind of lean on somebody that has some shit like already hooked up ready and just kind of we kind of just plug in type shit gotcha yeah 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 so you take over but you just not take over i mean we're we're willing to use your resources exactly and you take over what you need to do with their resources totally and we'll like let's say we'll we'll do the front end of like as far as marketing and getting it out there like that's that's what you're gonna do yeah Yeah, that's easier stuff versus you know you know, yeah, that that back end portion is just, it's a, it's, it's not important. Like, we need a grower. It's no, you need a facility, we yeah, a team, exactly. Who exactly? And you know, we're willing to give you know, no, give I up told, some. I you know, I'm for that. You know, you're in the ah oh, man for just to get pulled like that. That's a. That's a little, oh, I shook. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. We're like we're here. We are thinking we're about to launch last 420. And you oh, know, this is last year. This is last year. Yeah. And with that pandemic, who you and that go shit to fucked us up meetings? even more so. You know. So, yeah, I think it was just bad timing, bro, really, you know. Really? But we had good momentum because, you know, we were already launched in Vegas. We were trying to launch in, in California. That's where, because they, they were in motion to do so, you know. So it just, like I said, man, it was. Uh, in time. Smoke and mirrors sometimes, yeah, bro. But, but in time. It, yeah. I'm patient, bro. Yeah, I don't. You got to rush Things it. don't happen overnight, and I'm very this aware of that. This industry's new. Yeah. Even though it's been years, it's brand new because it's just started. It is. It's gonna get 
times uh, people don't even understand. It seems like it's oversaturated to a degree, but it's but people understand how big it's gonna get once yeah. another state opens up and that state opens and that oh and fuck, then it's federal, federal and then it's like yeah game once over. it's federal it's like selling different soda brands no at doubt. this point no doubt Whew, there's trillions no of dollars doubt. at this point yeah man i mean and there's like, room for everybody like you said yeah like i said and we have a different type of niche like i don't i haven't seen anything that looks like us out I, there that was sick you know i love if you look at the reading. instagram you kind of get an idea of like you know it's not it's not what I see. I mean, I see a lot of other brands that are definitely this different, you know, that, that kind of fo- they're following what's cool or what, what, what seems to be working. I, that's, that's I'm not mad at that. That's, that's dope. I think you should. If you, if you feel you know, confident about your company like that, run that way. But I think, you know, for us, it's a little more like cleaner aesthetic and, you know, definitely is. good product at the end of the day. It's just like the clothing industry. If you you can ride trends, but every trend fucking falls. So For if you're sure. just riding every trend, you're just gonna fall off each time. Yeah. Same yeah, thing. With, same thing with this, man. For sure. That's I like that. That's yeah, sick. Dude. That means a lot coming from you, bro. Real shit. Nice. Yeah, maybe well, we talk after. We we'll see. You. <laughs> oh no, 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 no worry. I was about to say, I got you. Don't worry. Um, well, th- I want to say thank you so much for coming on here. Dude, thank thanks you for, for chilling. having me, bro. Real shit. Thanks for the board. Yes, dude. For real. Thank you. And also, since you're a Bond guy, wh- there's a, you pick, take your pick. Hell yeah, All right, dude. Take Thank you, you, bro. I've seen a, fl- a lot of them <laughs> flowing out of here, bro. Whatever you want. That's again, so awesome, you. bro. I appreciate it, bro. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much. I want to appreciate, uh, I want to say thank you so much for coming out here. Mm-hmm. Let's get you out of here. Whew, thank you guys for Congratulations, out with us. too, on everything going on, bro. I'm stoked for you, bro. Appreciate it. Thank Podcast you. Podcast is just the beginning, man. I think you got a lot going on. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. For, yeah. for, uh, nine, the Nine Club. Yeah, definitely. For everybody out there, links in the description. We'll uh, definitely be watching it. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. I think it's awesome. I yeah. think it's very, I mean, who else is out there doing that? No, that's the thing in this in the skateboard industry. Nobody. nobody. I mean, there's there's one other podcast. It's called The Bunt, and they're really rad. They're doing what they do. Um, but no, there's really nobody else in our lane. So it's kind of dope. It's cool. It is. Yeah. It's very cool. To, like I said, it's just not soaking up knowledge. Like, wow, this this is the opinion of experts. That's right. how I'm looking at it. Right. You know. Right. That's so good dope. shit for you. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think it's cool. I think Appreciate it's very it, cool. Yeah. And you're in another venture of something you're not you weren't comfortable with at first, and now you're like, I like it. I liked it. That's yeah. sick. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's been a whole fun, new man. world, man. It's fun shit. Podcasts are, are pretty fun, man. I can't, I can't deny it. So thank you so much. Hell I want to yeah. say thank you so much. We're going to get you out of here. Guys, um, we appreciate you watching. I'm fucking hot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for I watching. Um, for Jerron Wilson on all social medias? Uh, yes. yes. Everything? Yep. Okay. Also, Nine Club on... Was it YouTube and Twitter? YouTube, Twitch. Instagram? Uh, oh, Twitch also. Yeah, yeah. What are you guys doing on Twitch? Um, we just started a, this thing called The Green Room. It's just another extension of uh, The Nine Club. And basically, we just it's like a live chat room. So we go in there and just fucking answer questions and shoot it up with the, the community for the most part. Sick. Man. So instant fucking knowledge. Right oh, it's there, cool. Like, Twitch, there, there seems to be, they seem to be liking it, man. It's dope. The Nine Club on Twitch. Yep. That's awesome. I'm in. Good shit. Are you on there? Are you guys all on there or just? We go on usually after the, ex- after the experience on Sunday evening. So we'll usually get on around like 10, give or take in the evening. And we're on for about two hours. And like I said, we're just interacting with the community and ask- answering questions and just shooting the shit, man. Cool, you know? man. Yeah. Sick. It's dope. Well, guys, descriptions for, I mean, link for the description. Everything's going to be there. Thank you so much for being here. Hell yeah. Appreciate Thank it. You. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks for watching another episode of the Dope As Usual podcast. If you're driving, please be safe. If you're at home, hang out, have fun. Thank you guys for hanging out with us, giving us your time. I'm Dope As Yola. Have a dope-ass day. Hell yeah. Ooh, yo. That was dope. I am. I'm fucking hot. That's dope. <laughs> I am fucking hot. All right, post read. Um, I'm going to move my mouth and Omar is going to talk. Omar, you sit right here and you talk. And I'm going to move my mouth, okay? You do my ad read. I'm kidding. You thought I was serious? You're fucked up. Look how high he looks. What's up, guys? You have just finished another episode of the Dope As Usual podcast. Thank you so much for being a part of it. We appreciate it. We also want to thank our sponsor, Stereo App. If you don't know what this is, this is basically a way for you to talk to us. Marty and I, part of the podcast, if you have direct questions or 
there's nowhere else you're going to be able to go to talk to us more intimately, more frequently, and more just personal. This isn't a live chat. It's nothing like nothing like that. This is more of a room that we can all talk to each other. And if you're not into the talking, you just want to listen and hear what we got to say, it's just like the podcast. This is an extension of us. Go ahead and check us out on the Stereo app. Hit the link in our description. If you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, iHeartRadio, whatever you're watching, YouTube, click the link below. That's a Stereo app. What you do is when you click that link, download the app and follow us. That's our direct link. So two to three times a week, I'll be on there. Marty will be there sometimes also. This is basically what's going to happen. Uh, Maybe there's a topic we talked about in the podcast or something that you saw on the podcast you want to know more about. You can ask us directly. Do you see what I'm saying? This This is the listener and host directly talking to each other. So if you guys are fans, you always you had questions from years ago, let us know. This is this is the app for it. Do me a favor. Like I said, click the link below. That's the stereo app. Download that. Follow us. I really appreciate it, guys. That's dope as usual on the stereo app. Thank you again for watching another episode of the podcast. Have a dope ass day. Thank you.